Kelly from Craft and a Cuppa and today I'm going to do a full length tutorial on the Bohemian Bandana Cowl. Lovely easy pattern this is, it works up so fast as well. It'd be perfect for presents like a gift at Christmas. Don't want to say that word just yet because we've not long had it, although it is February already. But anyway, it is going to be uh, made to measure style again, so you can use any ply of yarn that you wish. I have yet to make one in anything other than DK yarn. I will just put that disclaimer out there. I was thinking of doing a chunky one, but I've not quite got round to doing it. So I have to update you on that. So it, although you can use any yarn, I'd probably recommend sticking with DK. Or if you like to you know what, it's cool, I'm gonna experiment. Go ahead and be my guest. So I'm gonna provide all the measurements that you need as always everything that you need to know about this pattern to help you make it is going to be in the written description of the video now it changes all the time so if you're using your phone right now at the moment you have to click the title of my video and it will bring up a small section of the written description and possibly like read more at the bottom click that and it will bring up all of the written description it can be so fiddly to find and it'll, they'll probably change it after this now I've said all that but anyway shall we get on with it okay so here are some of the things that you're going to need to make this pattern yarn I have gone for Deramore's Studio Anti-Piling DK because it just feels so soft and lovely and I love the colours of it as well. I'm actually toning it down a bit for this one and just picking two colours. You can use as many as you want. It's completely up to you. Uh, I've gone with a five millimetre hook because I work better with that, with this kind of DK. But you use whatever you, um, hook you work with the best. Uh, a tape measure, scissors, and a little needle for weaving in your ends. And I'm pretty certain that's about it. But if I think of anything else, obviously I'll be like, oh, I missed this. But hopefully, hopefully we'll get through this tutorial without any hiccups. <laughs> I can't promise, but I'm going to try. Right, let's crack on. Okay, so I am going to be changing colour every four rows. Now you can change colour whenever you like. But I'm going to do it every four rows because when we get a little bit further into the pattern, it's going to break off into two sections and each section consists of four rows. And then we're going to keep repeating section one, section two, section one, section two, until you reach the correct width for your bandana cow. And I just thought if I change colour every four rows, it's going to be much easier for me to show you what I mean. But saying that, this pattern is perfect for a yarn cake. I've just made one in rainbow, but I gifted it, so I don't have it with me to show you, but it, it looked amazing. I will be making another one though, because my daughter's like, I need that, mummy! <laughs> but we gifted it to a friend as a birthday present, which is nice. Okay, so I am going, I'm going to do a little chain we're going to make a loop basically and I like to do a chain now if you prefer to do a magic circle then go ahead and do a magic circle um, but I'm going to use a chain instead so I'm just going to make a slip knot and put that on my hook now I'm going to chain four and then come back to my first chain and put a slip stitch through it to create like a loop or a ring whatever you want to call it but if you prefer to do a magic circle, then that's fine. Do whatever you prefer, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way, it's however you wanna do it. So if you've done what I've done, we're gonna crochet over the top of this tail end so that when we get to the end of this row, we can pull it tight and just close that gap, that little loop. So what we're gonna do is chain three and that is gonna class as your first double crochet. We're now going to put four double crochets back inside the centre of this loop. So four double crochets. Here we're done. And remember to, if you've done what I did, to crochet over that tail. If you use chains for your loop. How many have I done? One, two, three four 
So if you go back and count, that should give you technically five double crochets because we are including the chain as one double crochet. I know what I'm talking about, really. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is chain two. And then we're going to put five double crochets back into that loop. One, two, three, four, five. And that is the end of row one. So I'm just going to take my little tail and I'm going to pull it tight because I've been crocheting over it. That's row one. Okay, row two, nice and easy. We're going to chain three, which classes as your first double crochet. Turn our work and put one double crochet in the same stitch as the chain three. Now we're just gonna put one double crochet in every single stitch until we reach the center chain space. Right, we're at the centre chain space. I just nearly just went on with it then, didn't I? We're now going to put two double crochets in the centre chain space. Chain two. And then two double crochets back into that centre chain space. And now we're going to put a double crochet in every stitch, coming back up the opposite side. Okay, so I'm now left with my chain three from the beginning of the previous row. I'm just going to give that a little wiggle and I'm going to go straight through the top of the chain three and I'm going to put two double crochets in that final stitch. If I can get in there. Hang on. Sometimes I find if I give it a little wiggle, there we go, I can get in easy. One. Two. And that is row two. So you should have eight double crochets on each side and the center chain space. Okay, row three, we are using the popcorn stitch. Now I'll go over it with you quickly, but I do have a tutorial for it already, um, which, goes over it quite a lot. So I will link the tutorial in the written description for the popcorn stitch, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're going to chain three, and then we're gonna turn our work, and we're gonna put one double crochet back into that same stitch. Now we're going to chain one, we're gonna skip the next stitch, and then we're gonna put a popcorn stitch in the next stitch. So um, for my popcorns, I'm using four double crochets. If you want to use five, that's fine, but I'm using four for this one. So I'm going to put four double crochets in this same stitch. One, two, three, four. So that's all gone in that same stitch. Now I'm going to carefully take out my hook and just make that loop a bit bigger. Now I'm going to come to the first double crochet that I made out of those four that I've just put in that same stitch. I'm going to put my hook through the top of that stitch. And then I'm going to reconnect this loop back onto my hook again. Pull that tight. And now I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So we are basically slip stitching the last stitch that you made and the first stitch that you made for the popcorn stitch. We're going to slip stitch it. I like to pull it a bit tight to make the popcorn pop out. And to finish the popcorn stitch and close it, you just do a chain. And that's the popcorn stitch. Now I'm not going to go over it loads of times because like I say, I've got a tutorial for it, but that was just to show you quickly how you do it. 
So I've chained one to close my popcorn stitch. I now need to chain one again because we're going to skip a stitch. Now you've got to remember that. Don't just chain one and then go straight to the next stitch because the chain one on top of the popcorn is part of that stitch. So I need to make another chain. I'm going to skip my next stitch and we're going to put one double crochet in the next stitch. Like so. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch and put a popcorn in the next stitch. So do my popcorn. Four double crochets in the same stitch and then slip stitch the first and last stitch together. And then chain one to close that stitch. Now you should now have one stitch remaining and then the chain space, the center chain space. So in that stitch before the center chain space, we're going to put one double crochet. You're not going to add an extra chain because we're not skipping over that. Okay, so you just do your chain one for closing that stitch and we're going to go straight to the next stitch and put one double crochet in there. And now we're at the center chain space where we're going to put two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Ooh. So now we're going to come back along the opposite side and we're going to create a mirror image of what we've just done on this side. So we need to put one double crochet in the very next stitch after the center chain space. And then right next to that in the very next stitch, we're going to put a popcorn stitch. Right, that's my popcorn stitch done. I'm now going to chain one because I'm skipping the next stitch. And I'm going to put one double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch and put a popcorn in the next stitch. Right, that's my popcorn done. I'm now going to chain one again and I'm going to skip the next stitch and that leaves me with the chain three from the beginning of the previous row. So in the top of that chain three, I'm going to place two double crochets. And that is row three. Okay, now it's time for row four. Row four is a little bit different to all the other rows because we're going to be putting a chain space at the beginning of each row and we're going to be putting three double crochets in the center chain space rather than two. So don't worry, I'm going to go over the whole thing with you. So row four, okay, we're going to chain four and that's going to class as your first double and a chain one. So chain four, turn your work and put one double crochet back into the same uh, stitch. So what you've just done technically classes as a, a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So you've got this little chain space going on here. And now we're going to chain one, skip that next stitch and that's going to bring you to your next chain space. You're going to put one double crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip next stitch, which is your popcorn stitch. Find the chain space right after and put one double crochet in there. Chain one, skip the next stitch, which is a double crochet and come to the chain space right after that 
and put one double crochet in there chain one uh, skip the next stitch which is a popcorn stitch but we don't have any chain spaces left to work into so now we're going to be working into the stitches so we're going to stitch and stitch slip the next stitch which was your popcorn stitch and put a double crochet in the next stitch chain one skip the next stitch and you, that should take you to the final stitch before the chain space in the center so in that stitch before the chain space in the center you're going to put one double crochet not going to do any more chains now we're going to come to the center chain space and we're going to put three double crochets in there one two three and then we're going to chain two and now we're going to mirror image everything that we've just done so we're going to put three double crochets back into the center chain space then we're going to come to the next stitch directly after after the center chain space and put one double crochet in there and then chain one skip the next stitch and put a double crochet in the next stitch chain one skip the next stitch which is your popcorn stitch and then that brings us back to the chain spaces so we're going to put one double crochet in the chain space chain one skip next stitch one double crochet in the chain space chain one skip next stitch which is your popcorn stitch and go in the chain space right next to it with a double crochet and that should leave you with two stitches which is your double crochet and your chain three from the previous row chain one skip the next stitch and then in the top of the chain three you are going to put if I can get it open one double crochet oh get in there one double crochet then a chain one then another double crochet and that is row four okay it really pains me to say this but I've had to change my colour I really 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 wanted that other colour but it's too dark for recording <laughs> I wanted to wear it to the yarn festival, you see. I wanted mustard brown. Although that was more like Merlot, it was called. So maybe like real dark red, but it was too dark. <laughs> never mind, never mind. The show must go on. So we are using some different colours. So it's now row five. I've also noticed that I haven't been saying out loud the stitch counts. But don't worry because I'm going to add them in writing to the video. So keep your eyes peeled for the stitch counts. I'm also going to write all the stitch counts in the written description as well. Right, where are we? Let's go again. Unfortunately, but I think this is still going to look lovely. So, Okay, so I'm changing colour because I'm now on row five. If you are sticking with the same colour, I fastened off, look, so I can't put them and show you very well but you will just chain three and then turn your work now I'm going to join my new yarn in with a slip stitch so I'm going to come in from the side that I'm now about to work on you can join new colors however you wish I just like to use a slip stitch it just feels more secure but yeah right so I'm going to chain three and then we should all be at the same area at the same part of the pattern one two three remember if you're sticking with the same color chain three and then turn your work okay so we're going to put one double crochet back into this same stitch we are always doing that on the first and last stitch there will always be more than one stitch okay so remember that if you lose track if you stitch count you're like it's off i'm missing a stitch Sometimes it can be that last or first stitch where you've missed that extra stitch. So technically we've now got two stitches in the first stitch. We're now going to put a double crochet in every chain space and every stitch. So 
the next part, although it look you can't really see it very well, so just be careful, the next stitch is actually a chain space. So we're going to go in the next chain space with a double crochet, and then the next stitch with a double crochet, and then the next chain space, and then the next stitch, and keep putting double crochets in every chain space and every stitch until no chain spaces remain. Alrighty, I'm getting there. Next stitch, I've got two chain spaces. Last chain space. So now I've got one, two, three, I've got four stitches until I get to my center chain space. So I'm just gonna put one double crochet in the last four stitches. Now in the center chain space, we have gone back down to two double crochets. So I'm gonna put two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets back into that same center chain space. I'm gonna put one double crochet in the next four stitches that I've got going on here. And then that will bring me back to the chain spaces. Like so. So one double crochet in the next chain space, one double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next chain space, one double crochet in the next stitch. And let's keep repeating that until we get near the end of the row. Oh, I'm getting all tied up. Okay, so I am now up to the beginning of the neck of the previous row sorry so i've got one double crochet and the chain four so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put one double crochet in the next stitch which is that double crochet and then the chain four classes as one double plus one chain so that is a chain space so i'm going to put one double crochet in that chain space and then in the third chain of the chain four, I'm going to put two double crochets. Basically, because I've put a double crochet around there, that's covering the fourth chain anyway. So I'm just going to give this a little twist and go right in the top of that chain three and put two double crochets. If I can wiggle it in, there it goes. Two doubles. There we go. That's row five. Okay, row six, nice and easy. We're going to chain three. And we're gonna turn our work. And we're gonna put one double crochet back in the same stitch as the chain three. And now we're just gonna do chain spaces. So we're gonna chain one, Skip the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip your next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, which is gonna create your little window chain spaces. Gonna keep doing that all the way down both sides. So just skipping a stitch, chaining one, a double crochet in the next stitch. And your final stitch should be the stitch before the center chain space. If you find you've got an extra stitch, then something's gone wrong on a previous row. <laughs> Basically, probably what I just told you actually. Usually for me, if I go wrong on this pattern, I have noticed it's either to do with how many stitches I've put in the center chain space, so I've, I've gone a little bit wrong there, 
or it's always the first and last stitch. That's what I find with me with the popcorn and the popcorn row actually, because sometimes I just I do a popcorn popcorn double crochet and I'm like no it's meant to be popcorn double crochet popcorn double crochet. So yeah. Right, we're, oh sorry, we're in the centre chain space now. We're going to put two double crochets. Chain two. Two double crochets back in that centre chain space. Then we're going to come to the very first stitch and put one double crochet in there. And then you can continue to do your chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in next stitch chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in next stitch, chain one, skip stitch, double crochet in next stitch. And keep doing that all the way up this side. So like this might seem a bit confusing this pattern at the moment, but once you get into the swing of it, it's really easy. It's just memorizing your rows. But I'm gonna time stamp all the important rows that are going to be included in section one and section two that I was talking about at the beginning of the pattern. So if you need to, you can just click on the timestamp and it will take you straight to the correct row that you need to be working and doing. Because I'm good like that. <laughs> okay, right, I have got two stitches left. One of them is a normal double crochet and the other one is my chain three from the beginning of the previous row. So I've chained one, I'm gonna skip that second from last stitch, and I'm gonna go in the top of my chain three with two double crochets. I was then second guessing myself for a split second there, but nope, that is right, two double crochets. There we are. So that is, what are we on? Row six, I do believe, yes. It's quite easy because I'm working with my four, four rows each colour. I've done two, so now I know I'm on six. So yeah, that is row six. Okay, row seven. We are doing a puff stitch on row seven. Just like the popcorn stitch, I will go over the puff properly one time because I do also have a tutorial for it, which I will link in the written description which will go over it more times than one. <laughs> okay, so as before, we're going to chain three, turn our work and put one double crochet back into that same stitch. We're going to chain one and we're gonna skip that next stitch and we're gonna put a puff in the chain space, okay? So, puff stitch. I'm going to go over it once here, but like I say, I've got a detailed tutorial, which I'm also going to link as well. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go through the chain space, pull up a loop, just pull it up slightly so it matches like these um, stitches here that I've got going on here. If you pull it up too high, it can look a bit loose and baggy. So just a little, little length added to it. I'm going to do that two more times. Yarn over, insert my hook into the chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then do it one more time. Yarn over, go into my chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops in total on your hook. We are going to yarn over and go through all seven hoops. Now sometimes, if it's a bit tight, it can be good just to give it a little wiggle. Sometimes it will just go straight through, other times it just needs a little bit of a wiggle. Says me. And I've, I've not gone through it right because my hook's got stuck. Ah, I didn't wiggle hard enough, did I? It's okay, these things happen. It's probably because I'm trying to explain it as well. So, right, I'm going to make my puff again, but I'm going to do it quicker this time. Oh, it feels like, oh no, I've got it. Right, I'm going for that last loop. There we go, I've done my puff. 
just like the popcorn, to close it, we're going to chain one. And that is the puff stitch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to skip this next stitch. So we need to put another chain one on top of the chain one that we've just done. Because that previous chain one, just like the popcorn, is a part of the puff stitch. So don't forget your extra chain one to skip the stitch. We're going to put a puff in the next chain space. Whee! <laughs> So remember to insert that hook three times. Seven loops on the hook, go through all seven. And then a um, chain to close the puff stitch. And then another chain because we're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to put another puff in the chain space. Basically, we're going to put a puff in every chain space. Okay, chain one again, skip next stitch. Puff in the next chain space. Puff stitch is always one that I find annoying. I don't know why. But it also looks quite cute. And it feels quite cute. So, right, chain one again. Skip next stitch. Puff in the chain space. Keep doing that until no chain spaces remain. Chain one. Skip next stitch. Puff in the chain space. Chain one. I've got three chain spaces left, so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to meet you back here when I get to my final chain space. Okay, so I have put my last puff in the last chain space and I did my little chain one to close the puff but I'm not going to do an extra chain one because I have no chain spaces left. I just have three double crochets left before I get to the centre chain space. So we are going to put a double crochet in each of those stitches. So a double crochet in the next three stitches. And then that brings me to the center chain space where I'm going to put two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets back into the center chain space. And then we're going to mimic what we've just done on the opposite side. So we're going to put a double crochet in every stitch until you reach your chain space. So I'm at the chain space. I'm just going to go straight in with a puff stitch. And then chain one, skip my next stitch, puff in the next chain space. Oh, oh, I lost it. Isn't that annoying when that happens? Oh, especially if you're doing like bobble stitches as well. Any sort of stitch where you have to just keep the flow going and then you lose it right at the end. <laughs> so, oh, oh, why did I do that? And yeah, so you're going to keep chaining one puff in every chain space. Puff, chain one, skip stitch, puff and chain space. And I'll meet you when we get up to our last two stitches. Okay, so I've just done my last puff in my last chain space. I'm not going to do an extra chain because we now have two stitches left. Oh, actually, yes, I am. That's a big, big lie. <laughs> I'm going to chain one, <laughs> skip the next stitch, and then we're going to go in the top of the chain three with two double crochets right at that end. If I can twist the thing around, there it is. Me, I'm not going to do a chain space. What am I talking about? <laughs> and there we go. That is row seven, I do believe. Yep. Row seven. Right, now we're going to do row eight, which is basically the same as row four. But row eight is going to be the one that we're going to keep repeating for when it goes into whatever section. Section one, section one and section two, I think. 
I'm gonna do row eight and then I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea because I didn't realize how late it was. And I'm gonna have some banana bread because I made some banana bread yesterday. That's as good as my baking gets, banana bread. <laughs> but oh my gosh, it's lovely. I've put those in the freezer as well. <gasps> oh dear. Right, anyway, back to the matter on hand, not banana bread. It's not a baking tutorial, is it? Well, you can imagine that. <sighs> I can't bake at all, I'm so bad. Okay, row eight. This is the one that's slightly different to all the other ones because we're having the three double crochets in the center and we're having a chain space section in the first stitch rather than the regular two double crochets. So row eight, we're gonna chain four, turn our work and put one double crochet back into the same stitch, which is gonna make us an extra little chain space. And then nice and easy, chain one, skip the next stitch, and then in the next chain space, you're gonna put a double crochet. Chain one, Skip your next stitch, which is actually a puff stitch, nice and easy. Go in the next chain space with a double crochet. Chain one, skip next stitch, go in next chain space with a double crochet. And keep repeating that all the way down until no chain spaces remain. I love these rows because they're so quick to work up. You can really get good time when you are uh, have one of these rows, it's like, yes! Okay, so where are we? Oh yeah, I'm still here. This is where you've got to keep your eyes peeled. Chain one. Okay, so I am now at my last chain space, sort of, well, I've just got in my last chain space, actually. The next stitch is a puff stitch. We turn it round, you can see it, there it is. And then we've got all the double crochets. So I've run out of chain spaces. So I have done a double crochet, chain one, I'm going to skip over that puff stitch and I'm going to go in my next stitch with a double crochet. And then chain one, skip next stitch, go in the next stitch with a double crochet. And then keep doing that until we reach the final stitch before the center. That is going to be your final stitch that you go into. So remember, if you have stopped and you've got an extra stitch, something's gone wrong you are going in the final stitch before the chain space. So we're at the center chain space. We're not gonna do another chain. We are just gonna go straight into that with three double crochets. One, two, three. <clears throat> and then we're gonna chain two and then put three double crochets back into the center again. One, two, three, and then we're going to put one double crochet in the very next stitch. And then we can go back to chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch, chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch, chain one, skip next stitch, which for me is the puff stitch, and I'm now going to be working my double crochets into the chain spaces. So into the next chain space, chain one, skip next stitch, which is the puff, go in the next chain space with a double crochet. Chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in chain space. And keep repeating that all the way up the row. Okay, so I've got one puff stitch left and a chain space. I'm gonna go in my chain space with a double crochet. Chain one, I've got two stitches left. So I'm gonna skip the next stitch and I'm gonna go in the top of the chain three and I'm going to put one double crochet. Chain one, and then put one more double crochet back into that same stitch. So we've popped an extra chain space in that last stitch, just like what we've done at the beginning when we did the chain four and the double crochet. 
So that is row eight. I mean, that's what it looks like from the back, but that's what it's looking like from the front. Right, I'm gonna go have myself a cup of tea and then decide what color I'm going with next. See you soon. Okay, we are now on to row nine. So as you can see, I've been changing color every four rows. From here on out, the next four rows are going to be section one. And then the next four rows after that are going to be section two. And then you will just keep repeating section one and section two until you get the right width for the cow. So don't worry if you're thinking, how am I going to remember what the rows are? This is where I'm going to write everything in the written description and I am going to timestamp every single row in each section. So if you like forget, you can just click straight on that timestamp and it will take you to the correct row that you will be doing. OK, so don't worry about it. I've got you covered. <laughs> OK, so I'm changing colour. We're now on row nine and this is the first row of section one. I'm changing colour. If you're sticking with the same colour, you need to chain three and turn your work. I'm changing colour, so I've turned my work and I'm going to attach it uh, right here, basically. <laughs> Can't think of the words, they failed me. <laughs> right. I also had a very lovely uh, cup of tea and banana bread. Oh, that was so good. I wish I'd got myself out an extra slice actually, but never mind. Probably for the best. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go in the very first stitch and chain three, and then we will all be at the same bit. Yeah, chain three. So remember, if you're sticking with the same colour, you chain three and then turn your work. So we are going to put one double crochet back in the same stitch as the chain three. And now we're going to put a double, we've actually done this row already actually, it's row five is what we're doing. All these double crochets. So we're going in every chain space and every stitch. Now remember to not miss out this very first chain space that we made at the end of the last row. So you've got your two doubles technically in the first stitch and then you're going to go in the chain space with a double crochet. And then it will be the next stitch with a double crochet. Then the next chain space, double crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. And keep putting one double crochet in every chain space and every stitch until no chain spaces remain. Okay, so work your way all the way down this edge and I'll meet you at the final chain space. Okay, so I've just put a double crochet in my last chain space. Um, I've got four double crochets here. I'm going to put a double crochet in every single stitch until I reach the center chain space. There we go. And then what we are going to do is we are going to put two double crochets in the center And then chain two and then put two more double crochets back into the center and then we're going to put a double crochet in every stitch until we reach the next chain space right I'm at the chain space now, so it's back to one double crochet in the chain space, one double crochet in the stitch, one double crochet in the chain space, one double crochet in the stitch. So keep doing that all the way up the row and I will meet you right near the end. Okay, so I'm right near the end and it looks like I've got two stitches left, but remember it's a double crochet and a chain four. So that is a chain space in there. So I'm gonna put one double crochet in the top of the stitch. 
one double crochet in the chain space and then two double crochets in the third chain of that chain four. It's basically the first chain that you can see because you're covering up the chain four with your double crochet. So just pop two double crochets in there. If I can get it to go through. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here we go. Two double crochets in the third chain of the chain four. And that is row nine. Okay, this is now row 10. Nice and easy. To be honest, it is really easy. It's just because I've mixed up the uh, popcorns and then the puffs where you might have to like think about it a little bit. But apart from that, it's quite a simple pattern. So, row 10, nice and easy. We're gonna chain three, turn our work and put another double crochet in the same stitch as the chain three. And now all we're gonna do is do um, the chain space row again. So we're gonna chain one, we're gonna skip the next stitch and we're gonna put a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch and just keep doing that all the way down this row. It's what I like to call a speed row because we can do these rows very quickly. Well, I say very quickly, they are quick to do. So yeah, keep doing that all the way down to this bit and I'll meet you when we get to the centre chain space. Right, I'm now approaching the centre chain space and the last stitch that I'm going to go into is actually the last stitch before the centre chain space. I've said it before, if your um, last stitch is going in the one before it, something's gone wrong on the previous row or the row before. Ooh. But I am going to write all the stitch counts as well in the written description, so don't worry. <laughs> right, so I have chained one. I am going in to the last stitch which is just before the chain space in the center. So in the center, we're gonna put two double crochets, chain two, two more double crochets. And then to mirror image what we've just done, we're gonna go in the very first stitch of a double crochet as well. And then we can go back to doing our chain one, skip stitch, one D's, double crochet and next stitch. And then he said DC. I might have said that already actually, I don't know. I'm so used to writing patterns. Right, skip next stitch, one double crochet in next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in next stitch. Keep doing that all the way across the row and I'll meet you back here when we get to the end. Okay, I'm right near the end of the row and I've got two stitches left. So I'm going to chain one and skip the next stitch. And then I'm gonna put two double crochets in the top of that chain three from the beginning of the previous row. Oh, I've not gone through it, hang on. I just went around it. One, two. Two stitches in the final stitch which is the top of the chain three. And that is row 10. Lovely. Okay, so like I am nowhere near finished yet. I've just realized, I think my camera's on the wrong because that's straight to me. Then when I look in the camera, it looks a bit off. Okay, let's put it there. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm not actually anywhere near where I need to be for measuring, but I'm going to show you how to measure the cowl. Um, so just in case you're using a thicker yarn than what I am and you're making a kid's one or something, you might get there a bit quicker than me. So basically there's going to be three measurements in the written description. One is going to be for kids, I think I did it possibly four to seven years, and then I think I've done eight to eleven years. And then it's going to be adult. So 
You'll find a measurement in there. I think adult is 68, possibly. I can't remember what I wrote now, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> I'm not there. Yeah, adult is 68 centimetres. I'm making an adult one, so that is what I've got to aim for. So when you're measuring, you're just going to take your tape measure and measure right across the top edge from one corner to another corner. I am at 17 centimetres, so I've got a little way to go. But just think, every time you do a row, you're actually adding on two, aren't you? It's not just going to be one. You're adding on both sides. So it does grow really quickly once you get into the swing of the pattern. So yeah, that's it for measuring. Okay, now it's time for row 11. Row 11 is the popcorn row. So as you can see, we've got popcorn on this bit and then this bit we've got puffs and they, those two are going to be alternating that's why we have a section one and a section two because section one has the popcorn in it and section two is going to have the puff in it the puff <laughs> maybe <me> sound funny <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm laughing at I'm sorry <laughs> okay right let's start row 11 Right, okay, row 11. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three, turn our work and put one double crochet back in the same stitch as the chain three. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna skip the next stitch and we're gonna come to the chain space and we're gonna put a popcorn stitch in there. So remember that was four double crochets and then you basically slip stitch the first double crochet to the la no hang on i've got that the wrong way around we're going to slip stitch the last double crochet to the first double crochet of the popcorn and remember i've got the full length tutorial as well <laughs> if you if you want to just freshen up and then a chain to close that stitch okay so we're going to be doing just what we did on this row, but we've got a few more popcorns. I think that was row three, wasn't it? We've got a few more popcorns to do now. <laughs> Sorry, but it's not too bad because we've got double crochet in between each one. So we're going to chain one. We're going to skip the next stitch and put a double crochet in the next chain space. Chain one, skip the next stitch and put a popcorn in the next chain space. Okay, chain one, skip next stitch, put a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch. Well, I said next stitch there, didn't I? Put a double crochet in the next stitch. I meant the chain space. You know what I meant though, I hope. <laughs> skip next stitch, put a popcorn in the next chain space. And we're just going to keep alternating in every chain space between a popcorn stitch and a double crochet stitch and remember you need to chain one in between each one we just finish this stitch a minute okay so you're going to keep doing that all the way down this row remember it's popcorn i'm not reading the shot i'm going to look popcorn double crochet popcorn double crochet popcorn double crochet and i will meet you back here when you're on your last chain space okay okay I'm up to my last chain space so I've chained one so in your last chain space you should be placing a double crochet now if that's not the case you need to go back and make sure that you have alternated popcorn double crochet popcorn double crochet because there's been lots of times where I've just gone on off on one forgot what i'm doing thinking about something else and just put loads of pops and then i'm like oh no oh i've put too many popcorns in and missed out the double crochets it's easy done don't beat yourself up just frog it back and do it real quick and we'll, you'll be back here in no time <laughs> okay so we now have three stitches remaining and then the 
center chain space. Couldn't think what it was called then. I'm now going to put a double crochet, just one double crochet in every single stitch until I get to the center chain space. Oh, my phone's ringing. Hello, back again. It's actually a brand new day here because that phone call was my daughter's school. She had a little bit of an accident and a bash to the head, bless her heart. So we had to take a trip to minor injuries unit, but I can confirm that she's all okay. Thank goodness for that. So, where are we at? I have just put a double crochet in every stitch and I'm now up to my center chain space. So we're gonna put two double crochets in the center chain, chain space. Yeah, that's right. I started to doubt what I was saying then. Chain two, two double crochets back into the center chain space. And then I'm gonna put one double crochet in every stitch before we get to the next chain space. And then because we're doing a mirror image of what we've just done on the other side, we have a double crochet in that chain space. So we're going to put one double crochet in the first chain space, chain one, and then we can do our popcorn stitch. It's just all about mirror imaging what we've just done on the opposite side. popcorn stitch and then chain one and then put a double crochet in the next chain space so we're going to skip the stitch sorry if I forgot to mention that here chain one skip next stitch and then I'm going to put a double crochet in that chain space so keep alternating up the row between popcorn double popcorn double all of chain ones in between them and I'll meet you when we get to the end of the row Okay, so I'm right near the end of my row and I've just put a popcorn in the last chain, which has left me with two stitches. So I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch and go in the next stitch, which is the top of the chain three. And I'm going to put two double crochets in the top of that chain three. One, two, and that is row 11. Right, now it's time for row 12. And this is the last row of section one, this one is. So row 12, we're gonna be repeating what we've done after the previous popcorn and the previous puff row. So this is the row where we have a chain space at the first and last stitch and three double crochets in the center chain space. So we've got a chain four. Oops. Oops. Don't chain like that. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've just come out of it twice. All right, chain four. Turn your work and put one double crochet back in that same stitch. And that's created your chain space. And then nice and easy, we're gonna chain one, skip the next stitch, one double crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip next stitch, which is the popcorn, and then you're gonna go in the um, chain space, which is in between the popcorn stitch and the double crochet stitch. So we're gonna go in there with a double crochet. Chain one, skip next stitch, which is your double crochet. Go in the next chain space with a double crochet. I feel like I'm repeating that word far too many times. There's far too many double crochets going on right now. All right, chain one, skip next stitch and go in the next chain space with a double crochet. So remember, this is this part you've got to remember that you do have a chain space between this double and this popcorn stitch. But they do look quite close together because the popcorn's quite a big stitch. So just make sure that you go in that chain space between those two and don't miss it. So just keep chaining one, skipping stitch, double crochet in next chain space. Keep doing that until no chain spaces remain. <clears throat> My voice is going. Oh, it's good, isn't it? 
keep doing that until no chain spaces remain and I will meet you back here when I reach there. <laughs> okay, right. I'm almost there. I actually have one chain space left. But like I just said a minute ago, the chain space between the popcorn stitch and the double crochet stitch is really hard to see. It's there. We did it. It's there, but it's really hard to see it. So you've got to remember that on the previous row, we was doing popcorn, double, popcorn, double, and we ended up with a double in the last chain space. Okay, so when you get to what is your last popcorn stitch, you are going to chain one, and you're going to find the chain space between the popcorn and the double, because like I say, it's there, but it's hidden. You can't see it very well. So we're going to put a double crochet in that final chain space, which is kind of hidden. And now we're going to be working into the stitches. OK, so we're going to chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in the last stitch and that should be the last stitch before the chain space and remember if it's not something's gone wrong on the previous row <laughs> I'll always keep saying that so there then that brings us to the center chain space where we're going to do three double crochets chain two and then three double crochets back into the same ch center chain space. I don't even know what I was going to say then. Chenta. Chenta same space. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we've definitely got three each side. Yeah. Then we're not going to chain just yet because we're going to put one double crochet in the next stitch. And then chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch and then that's brought us to the chain space which we can see a bit easier on this side like it's very clear it's just this first side it's not as clear so we are going to chain one, skip a stitch and then start going in the chain spaces with the double crochet chain one skip next stitch and then here's the example again where the popcorn and the double look very grouped together but in the middle there is a hidden chain space the little cheeky cheeky is hiding but we know you're there well it could be quite easy to pass that's, that's why i'm pointing it out right we're going in it we're going in in the chain space with a double chain one skip stitch double in next stitch so keep doing that all the way up. Make sure you get in between those popcorns and those doubles. And I'll meet you back at the end of the row. Okay, so I'm right near the end of my row. I have my last popcorn stitch here. And again, that chain space after that popcorn is a little bit hidden. So don't miss it out, okay? So I've chained one. I'm going to go in to that chain space, that hidden chain space there with a double crochet and that leaves me with two stitches which was the double crochet and the chain four from the previous row so that is also a chain space so what we are going to do oh no it's not what am I talking about <laughs> no, it's not ah it's definitely not just ignore me that is definitely not we are now going to create the chain space what am I talking about We've just got two stitches. It's a, it's a chain three and a double crochet. So I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip that next stitch. And then I'm going to put another chain space in here. That's what I was really trying to say. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go in the top of that chain three. We're skipping that second stitch. And we're going to go in the top of the chain three with one double crochet. Chain one and put one more double crochet back into the same stitch. That is exactly what I meant when I said everything totally wrong a minute ago. Never mind. 
and that is row 12. So this is what it's like. This is the back side. The back side. And this is the front, the right side. So we have just completed section one. Basically, we're now going to do section two. It is literally exactly the same, apart from the popcorn stitch will become the puff stitch. And then we're just going to keep repeating section one, section two, section one, section two. So, yeah, we're getting there, everybody. I will also add quickly that because I've been changing colours, I've been weaving my ends as I go. I don't know how you feel about it, but I get really overwhelmed when there's too many ends and it's just like, oh no, it's like the end of the world. I can't deal with all these ends. I get really overwhelmed by them. So literally, uh, every time I finish a section, I've got two ends to weave in. So I just weave in those two ends and it's no big deal at all. And I just keep doing that after each section, weaving in two ends. Lovely. So yeah, just a little tip there. Okay, we are now going to start section two so we should be here um, I'm going to change color but if you're sticking with the same color you're going to need to chain three and then turn your work I'm just going to quickly attach my new color which is this lovely uh like it's kind of red but dusky red I don't know I bet my son would know he knows all the colors very clever. <laughs> right, let me turn it round because I'm going to attach mine on the actual side that I'm working on with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain three and we should all be raring to go. Okay, so we're going to put one more double crochet back into the same stitch. Right, so we've got to remember that this here is a chain space that we created in the final stitch of the last row. So we're gonna put one double crochet in the chain space, one double crochet in the stitch, one double crochet in the chain space, one double crochet in the next stitch. And we're gonna keep doing that all the way down. This is just a plain double crochet row that we've done a few times already because like I say the pattern does actually repeat itself and the only difference is that the popcorn stitch and the puff stitch alternate so yeah keep putting one double crochet in every chain space and every stitch and I'll meet you when we get near the bottom okay so I have now gone in my final chain space we're now going to put a double crochet in every stitch before the next chain space which is the center chain space so one double crochet in every stitch and then we're going to put two double crochets in the center chain space and then chain two and then two more doubles back in that center chain space. Oh, what we've done. My yarn's gone a bit funky. Hang on, I've got to do both of those again. Put my two doubles back in. And then we've got four stitches. So we're now gonna put a double crochet in every stitch. And then it brings us back to the chain spaces. So it's one double crochet in the chain space and one double crochet in the next stitch. And then he's gonna keep doing that all the way along and I'll meet you when we get near the end. Okay, I'm right at the end and I have what looks like two stitches remaining. This is what I was trying to say on the previous row and I was totally wrong but it is correct for this row. So we did the chain four and a double crochet. So that has actually got a chain space in there. So we're gonna put a double crochet in the first stitch, a double crochet in the chain space, and then two double crochets in the third chain of the chain four. 
And that is row 13. Struggling to fit it in now into the camera. So yeah, row 13. Okay, row 14 is a chain space row. So for this one, we chain three and then we turn our work and put one double crochet back into the same stitch. And now we're gonna do our chain spaces. So chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in next stitch. And repeat that all the way down the side and I'll meet you back here when we get to the centre. Okay, I've now reached the centre chain space. My last double crochet is in the last stitch before the centre chain space. Then I'm going to put two double crochets into the centre and then chain two and then two more double crochets back into the centre. I'm not going to chain just yet because I need to put one double crochet in the next stitch. And now I'm ready to carry on with my chain spaces. So chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. And I will meet you at the end. Okay, I'm at the end. I now have two stitches left. So I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch and put two double crochets in the final stitch, which is the top of the chain three. Oh, no, that didn't go in very well. I've caused a bit of drama, it looks like. I've kind of picked up a stray bit of yarn and caused a little bit of drama, but it's okay. There we go. That's 14, I think. Row 14. Done and dusted. Okay, row 15 is the puff stitch row. We did popcorn on section one and section two is puff. So we're going to chain three, turn our work, if I'm uh, in focus there, I do apologize. One double crochet back into the same stitch. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing today. I'm picking up like, I'm picking up bits of blooming yarn all of a sudden from stitches which isn't good, don't be doing that. So you've got a chain three and a double crochet in the same stitch. So we're now going to chain one, skip the next stitch and put a puff in the chain space. A puff stitch in the chain space. If I can wiggle it through, I'm probably gonna pick up loads of random strands here. All right, that's my puff. And then we're gonna chain one, skip the next stitch, Puff in the next chain space. And that is all we're gonna keep doing until no chain spaces remain. So it's chain one, skip stitch, puff in chain space. Chain one, skip stitch, puff in chain space. And I'll meet you when there are no chain spaces remaining. Okay, so I've put my puff in the last chain space I now have stitches remaining instead so I've not chained a, an extra stitch because we're going to just put three double crochets in the next three stitches well one double crochet in the next three stitches okay so no extra chain for this puff because we're not skipping any stitches we're going to go straight in the next stitch with a double crochet and one double crochet in every stitch until we reach that center chain space. Right, and in the center chain space, we're gonna do two double crochets. A chain two, and two more double crochets. And then we're going to put a double crochet in every stitch until we reach the chain space. Double crochet, 
We're going to go straight in the next chain space with a puff stitch. And then we're going to chain one, skip next stitch, puff in next um, chain space. And just keep repeating that all the way back up the other side. So it's chain one, skip stitch, puff. Chain one, skip stitch, puff in all the chain spaces. And I'll meet you back here at the end. Okay, so I've just done my last puff in the chain space and I've got two stitches remaining. I'm going to skip, oh hang on, I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch and put two double crochets in the final stitch which is the top of the chain three. There we go. And that is row, I can't even remember, 15. There we go. So we've got one more row left to do for section two. And then we're just going to keep repeating these two sections. So row 16, let's do it. Okay, row 16. It feels weird that I'm back here already. I feel like I've only just done this row. Like I say, it's very repetitive. Okay, this is another chain space row where we add the chain space in each end and three double crochets in the center. So we're gonna chain four. We're gonna turn our work. And we're gonna put one double crochet in the same stitch. And that is gonna make our first chain space. And then we're going to chain one, skip next stitch, double crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip stitch, which is your puff, one double crochet in the next chain space. So just keep chaining one and put a double crochet in every chain space, basically. That's how easy it is. And I'll meet you uh, when we get near the bottom of this area. So yeah, like that. Lovely jubblies. Okay, I've gone in every chain space. Uh, my last puff stitch is here, but there's no chain space next to that one. It's going straight into the double crochets. So I'm going to chain one, skip the puff, go in the next stitch with a double crochet, chain one, skip next stitch, go in the next one with a double crochet. Keep repeating that, and then your last stitch should be the last stitch before the center chain space. Now we're going to put three double crochets in the center chain space. And then a chain two. And then three more doubles back into that center chain space. And then we're going to put one double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to chain one, skip next stitch, one double in the next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, one double in the next stitch. Chain one, skip next stitch, which is your puff stitch. And that brings you back to the chain spaces. So you keep chaining one, skipping the next stitch, one double crochet in the next chain space. Keep doing that and I will meet you right at the end of the row. Okay, so I've gone in my last chain space and I've got two stitches remaining. I'm gonna chain one, skip the next stitch and I'm gonna go in the last stitch, which is the top of the chain three, with one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet back into that same stitch. There we have it. And we're going to fit it in this, the screen. I do not know. Let me just zoom out a minute. Okay, so we have just completed section one with the popcorn stitch and section two with the puff stitch. 
You are now going to keep repeating section one, section two, section one, section two, section one, section two, until your top edge across here measures the correct measurement of the size that you were making. So I'm doing an adult's. I'm pretty certain it's 68. I said this last time and I checked and it was 68. So let's just say it is 68 and let's hope that I haven't said it wrong. Whatever's written in the written description is the right number, but I'm pretty certain it is 68. <laughs> so you're just gonna measure from one corner to another corner. I'm at 43 centimeters, so yeah. I mean, I've still got, a little, still got a little way to go, to be honest. But like I said before, every row that you do actually adds two lots of measurements onto it, doesn't it? Which is pretty, pretty good. So keep repeating, section one, section two. Both of these sections are timestamped along with the rows in the written description. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I can't quite remember exactly how to do it, just click on the timestamp and it will take you immediately to that row. So clever. Gotta love technology. I had my channel for, for quite a while before I actually knew how that worked. So I do apologize. I do need to go back to some of my older videos and add it on. But yeah, keep repeating these rows and I'll meet you back here when you have that measurement. And when you have that measurement, do not fasten off. Okay, keep your yarn attached because we're then going to join the piece together. So yes, do not fasten off. It's not the end of the world if you do, you're just going to have more ends to weave in and you're going to be like, ah, ah, pesky ends. So yeah, I'll meet you back here soon. Okay, so I've been doing section one, section two, section one, section two. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I have also added in the written description of the video um, how to work out your stitch counts for each row. If you want to stay on top of those, then I tell you how many you need to add to each row. Okay, so I can't quite fit mine in the uh, in the screen very well. Let me just get my get my notes out a minute and check my notes. So yes. I am aiming for 68 centimetres across the top because I am making um, an adult size. So I can't quite fit my corners in, but I'm going to just give it a little measure. I am at 69 and that's as good as it's going to get for me because the last time I measured I was about 65 and I need to get to 68. So 69 is fine. Don't worry if you haven't got that exact measurement. Chances are you're not going to hit it because we're all using different yarns, probably using different hooks, different um, weights of yarns, what I mean. But yeah. So once you have reached the measurement for the size that you were working, we're going to do the neckline. Okay, so now we are going to join our cowl together. And then from there on out, we're going to be working in the round. So what we're going to do is whatever side your yarn is, I'd put it to the right side because we're not fastening off. If you remember, I did say, don't. I'm pretty certain I did say, do not fasten off. <clears throat> so I'm going to insert my hook from where I last was. And I'm going to grab, at the minute, it doesn't matter if this is right side or wrong side. I'm just going to grab the opposite end. And I'm going to slip stitch it to the very first stitch of the last row, which is, for me, it is the top of chain three. So I'm just going to go straight in there and create a slip stitch, which then joins it in the round. Now we can fasten off. If, you're, um, if, if you've joined it and your cowl is right side facing, you probably don't need to fasten off. But if it's wrong side facing, I would suggest to fasten off. Otherwise, you could get yourself all confused and stuff. And plus, I want to change colour anyway. So I am going to fasten off. Okay. 
like so. Oh, that's the wrong end. Where's the bit I've just cut? There it is. And now I'm ready to start the neckline ribbing. Okay, neckline ribbing. We now need to make sure that we are working on the right side of the cowl. At the minute, if I like turn it around and look at the main body part, mine is wrong side. All my popcorns are facing this way. So this is the wrong side. So I need to turn mine inside out. Just flip it round like that. Just check that I can see my popcorns, which I can. So that's good. We need it so it's like this with the popcorns on the front. I'm now coming back to where I just did my join. I'm getting my new yarn and I've got a new colour. So now we're going to be working around the double crochet bars, which is basically the first double crochet or the chain three um, of each row. I'm going to be working around those to attach the neckline ribbon. Sometimes I might call it a DC bar. I don't mean to. It's just how I always write it when I'm doing my written patterns. and It just comes out much easier than a double crochet bar, DC bar. DC bar, double crochet bar, both the same thing. Okay, so we're going to go around the first double crochet bar on the left hand side after your join. And we are going to attach your other arm with a slip stitch. If I can get it, I don't know why, it's being a bit awkward. We're going to chain one. We're going to put one single crochet around that same double crochet bar. Then you're going to come to your next one and you're going to put two single crochets around the double crochet bar. Then come to your next one. Just keep following the pattern each like um, row that you've done. I'm going to put one single crochet around that double crochet bar. Next one is going to be two single crochets. The next one is going to be one single crochet and we're just going to alternate between one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet around every double crochet bar at the end of each row. Now if after we've done this um, you think oh my I've got a really big head I'm not saying that you've got a really big head <laughs> like that but just saying like if you think you oh it's a bit tight going over my head oh because you've still got to add ribbing on as well which is going to bring it in a bit more then you could go back and do one single crochet one single crochet two single crochets one single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochets. Okay, so like all I've done it this way, you can always make it a bit tighter or a bit looser. It just depends. We're all different, aren't we? So it just depends what you prefer. But bear in mind that when you put the ribbing on, it also draws it in a bit as well. I have mine so that I kind of have to, it's like better if I take my glasses off to pull it over my head. That's how I like mine to be because in the winter, uh, obviously I wear it. I wear these as a scarf. I also wear these as an all-day accessory like I'll wear these with a dress or whatever. I will keep it on all day if it's cold. So I do my ribbon quite wide so that if I go out I can have it as it is and it comes up to the bottom of my chin and it keeps my neck warm and then if I wear it as an accessory I can fold that ribbing down so it's looser around my neck. Probably should have said all that when I get to the ribbing, but I'll probably repeat it because I forgot that I've said it right now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, keep alternating one single crochet and then two single crochets. One single crochet, two single crochets. Just make sure I'm getting each row. And if you're not sure, just have a look and follow the stitches with your thumb or your finger and be like, yep, yeah, that's the one I've got to go around next. It's definitely easier if you've used different colours. If you've used the same colour, it can be a little bit trickier. That's why I just say, just keep looking at each individual row to know where you've got to go around next. So yeah, we're just going to keep doing this all the way around. When you get to the centre bit here, 
even if you've just put one single crochet here, make sure you just put one single crochet in the center and then you can put one single crochet there. If you've got two single crochets around there, well then it fits nicely, doesn't it? I mean, if you want to put two single crochets in there, there's nothing stopping you at all. I just tend to put one in. So yeah, I will meet you all the way around and when we get back to the beginning. Okay, I'm still doing my neckline at the minute with my single crochets, but one thing I forgot to add, which is very, very important, is that this round needs to end on an even number. And do you know what? Even if you haven't quite got it right, we've still got to do a double crochet row um, anyway. So you can always bodge it with the double crochet. I do that quite a lot, I'm not gonna lie. If I get to the end, I'm like, oh, that's an odd number. What is it an odd number or an even number? Hang on, let's check. I'm pretty certain it's even. Yes, it is an even number. Yeah, so if I got to the end of my uh, next round, which is double crochet, and it was odd, odd number, I'd be like, oh, I'm just gonna put another one in there. That's fine, just add one more stitch. It does not matter, okay? But yes, these two rows, rounds, technically need to end on an even number so that we can do the ribbing. Okay, so I've just gone round my last double crochet bar I've just given my stitches a count and if I'm correct I'm at 75 so we are also going to put a single crochet around that join that we did right there um, if I if I had an even number already I would put two single crochets around that join but if I'm correct I should have an odd number right now so I'm just going to put one single crochet around that join and then I'm going to slip stitch to the first single crochet, which is, is that the stitch or the chain? That's the chain. I'm trying to put it in the chain as I did, the chain one, that's no good. There we go. And I've slip stitch to the first stitch. And now you should be joined in the round. Jolly good. Okay, round two is nice and easy. I would probably suggest actually, just giving, that, giving this a little try on, make sure your head fits through it all right. And that it's not crazy, crazy baggy. Like mine's a little loose, um, but I know that it's gonna be brought in with my neckline ribbing. So, and don't worry if when you try it on, this front bit is all big and like protruding because once we get the neckline ribbon on, when I put it on, I just flatten it down, like on my chest. I'll show you anyway when, when it's done and I put it on. And then after um, a few wears and washes, this area starts to relax and that just becomes nice and floppy. To begin with, it is a little, it can be like a little bit stiff, so I just pat it down with my hand and let it fall wherever it is. So round two, nice and easy. We're gonna be doing a double crochet round. So we've got a chain three, which classes as your first double crochet. We are gonna turn our work for this round. So turn it around and then go in the next stitch with a double crochet and the next stitch with a double crochet and basically a double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. Okay, so I have made it to the end of my round and I'm gonna do a slip stitch to the top of the chain three from the beginning of the round. Ugh, and just make sure that this has an even number of stitches this round so that we can then do the ribbing. So ribbing, this is the last time that we are gonna turn our work so we're gonna chain one, we're gonna turn our work. So we have the right side facing us again. And now we're gonna do a bit of back post, front post ribbon, nice and easy. So we're going to do a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. So we're gonna go around the front post of this one, straight down whoop, with a double crochet and then back post coming in round the back. 
for a post double crochet, back post double crochet and just keep alternating all the way around Oop. between front post and back post, front post and back post and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. I just pulled that out of there. Anyway, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. I've just laid this out, and it looks like a little cape, doesn't it? Hmm, it's giving me like some sort of inspiration here. I don't know what, but <laughs> it does look quite cute, doesn't it? Anyway, I am near the end of my round. Where are we? So your final stitch should be a back post double crochet and mine is, thank goodness, so my counting was right and my stitches were even and then we're going to go to the top of the first front post double crochet and we're going to put a slip stitch through that and that's joined the round together. Now I'm just wondering, do I want to change colour right now? Um, I've got four colours to get through, haven't I? So if I did three of each, so I'm just procrast pro 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 procrastinate procrastinating that one. <laughs> you know which one I mean. I'm having to think. Um, let's have a look a minute. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes again, just to tell me how much I how much ribbing I added last time. Is it? I added about 6.5 centimetres of ribbon. Okay, so I think I might change colour. Where am I at right now? Two. Yeah, I'm going to change colour. <clears throat> if you're sticking with the same colour, we're just going to keep repeating this round that you've just done over and over again. So you're going to chain one and then you're going to come back around the this first stitch which was a front post double crochet but make sure you catch your chain one as well that you did on that same row or round sorry so you're going to go behind the whole lot like that and then do a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet and then a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet but I'm going to change colour uh, where are we? I've lost my yarn. It's there. Alright, what colour is next? Um, this colour. I don't even know what that colour is to be fair, so I can't really say the colour out loud, but it's this one. That one. Kind of like a dusky pink. Let me just swap my colours over. Hey, this yarn is so lovely. It's Derrimore's anti-piling. I remember when they said that they were shutting down like their website, and I was like, no! I was so sad. And then Lovecrafts were like, don't worry, we're gonna take over. I was like, yes, amazing. It is absolutely lovely. I've made a pick and mix sweater out of this and it's more, oh, I say it's my favorite. Well, all of everything I make seems to be my favorite, but it does feel lovely. Okay, so I'm changing color. I'm just gonna go in the top of my first stitch with a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna chain one. And then I'm gonna come just like what I've just explained straight down, straight in the front, around the back of the first front double crochet, post, oh, blah, 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 sorry, the first front post double crochet from the previous row and also the chain one from the previous row. Just go around both of them and do a front post double crochet. And then your next one is back post double crochet. And then front post, and back post and you're just going to keep repeating this round until you are happy with the width of your ribbon 
And like I say, I think I've added about 6.5. That's what I've got written in my pattern, so that must be what I added. 6.5 centimetres is what I added. And it was a nice height for me um, to keep it up when it was real cold and then to fold it down if I wanted to wear it all day as an accessory. I would also suggest as well, I know it's a pain, but I would suggest to keep trying this on when you're adding the ribbon because if for any reason you think, oh, I don't think mine's tight enough, like it's still a bit gapy, then I know it's painful, but just rip it out and re uh, add some more decreases in that first round. It's better to do it now so that you are happy with it because if you're thinking like, oh, I don't know if it's fitting me right, I think it's a bit loose, well, then you're going to be really upset with yourself because you've just done all this beautiful work and then didn't change it when it got to the neckline bit. Okay, so definitely try it on like with each round of ribbing that you're adding to make sure that you're happy with the fit. I mean, you might be doing it and then try it on and you're like, oh, I can't get it over my head. Or you might do it and be like, no, that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, keep repeating this front post and back post double crochet all the way around until you are happy with the width of your ribbing. And I'll meet you back here for tassels. If you want them, that is. I do, I love them. Okay, so my ribbing is done. I can't quite fit it all in at the minute, but here it is, front. I've been ever so good as well, and I've weaved all my ends in. That's the back. So yeah, I'm happy with how mine is. I did end up adding about 6.5 centimeters to my ribbing, but you can add as much or as little as you want. Actually, looking at that, it's more like six, but that's okay. <laughs> So yeah, so final part is the fringe. I mean, it's optional. You don't have to add the fringe if you don't want to, but I really like it. So I'm gonna be adding it onto mine and I'm gonna show you how to do it as well. And it's really easy. And then we're done. Amazing. Okay, so I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said uh, I'd probably forget something which in the section of the things that you need. That totally happened, and I knew it would. It's a sharp pair of scissors. You're gonna need a sharp, big pair of scissors to do your fringe. So I do apologize about that. Also, I mean, this is optional. You can literally like measure out your fringe. I have got a measurement here, hang on. Uh, let me just find my notes again. <laughs> Ah, oh, I didn't print it out. Oh no, I did, yes, did. About 35 centimetres long, okay? So you can measure out, my thing's all twisted somehow, each strand individually, but you will be here for ages, basically. So a good thing that I would suggest is to get a book. I've got a little book here. Um, doesn't matter how big it is. I say it obviously as long as it's not huge. If you only have bigger books, I've also got another one here, which is slightly bigger. Ah, uh, like this, slightly bigger. So you could actually go widthways rather than lengthways. You're probably thinking, what on earth is she talking about? But I'm about to show you a nice hack for doing fringe. Okay. So, my hack for cutting fringe. Obviously I said you can cut each individual strand at 35 centimetres and just cut a load out like that, but it's annoying, it's gonna take you ages. I usually like to have anywhere between five to seven strands for each bit of my tassel. So, a good hack is to get a book Get your yarn and put it right at the bottom of the book, about there, doesn't matter exactly where, but you're literally just gonna keep wrapping it around the book. Like this. How many times? I really don't know. <laughs> um, sometimes I'll just do a little bit and then I'll have to come back and do a little bit more if I haven't got enough. Uh, but just a good chunk, really, to get you going. So 
I'm just gonna keep wrapping that around my book. A few more times, I think, see how we do, like that. And then I'm gonna get my last bit, I'm at the bottom, okay? So I'm just gonna cut that about there. And just let that bit fall down. And then I'm gonna get my finger like to lift up all this yarn. I'm gonna get my scissors and like slide it down the bottom and just cut it all off like that. And then I have a wedge of yarn for my tassels. And I'm now gonna repeat that process in my other four colors. And I'll meet you back here when we're ready to start adding them onto the cowl. <laughs> I'm struggling to find my words. I'm catching them. Where are they? <laughs> but yes, you know what I mean. The cowl. <laughs> okay, right. I've got some tassels cut out. I'm probably going to have to cut some more at some point, but that's okay. Right, I'm going to use five strands per tassel is what I'm going to do. Normally, I like to take one of each colour because I just love it. I love the way it looks. But today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do each tassel a different colour. Probably I've decided that because I've got four colours and I want to use five strands. I mean, I could just take an extra strand from another piece, but I'm going to try it differently this time. So I'm going to go with gold in the middle. So I'm going to take five strands of gold or mustard, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of in between gold and mustard, this is. One, two, three, four, five strands of yarn. So yeah, we're going to make sure that they're all kind of like even-ish. Don't matter too much because you're going to trim them up when you're done anyway. Okay, so we're going to take these five strands of yarn and we are going to dangle them. It's a bit hard to see, but I am literally dangling it. And then I'm going to run my hands around it and I want it to be in the middle. My thumb up here and my forefinger. Well, it's not my forefinger. It's my uh, middle finger. <laughs> it's got a bit blocked up all of a sudden then. I'm going to create a little loop and it's got to be right in the middle. Okay, so just like that. I'm going to put that down to one side for a moment because I need to put my hook in the space where I want my first tassel to go. So I suggest starting in the centre chain space. Now with your, um, gosh I've got stuff in the way, hang on, with your cowl right side facing outwards, I would suggest to start in this centre chain space. So we're going to go from the bottom and put our hook through to the top, just like this. Let me put that down for a minute. I'm just gonna grab my tassels and keep them in that position that we've just had them in so that we've got this little loop which is in the center of all of our tassels. We're now gonna place that loop over our hook, like so. And we're now gonna pull all of these strands through the uh, center chain space. Sometimes it might be handy to use a wider hook, or I say a wider hook, a bigger, a larger size hook, uh, but I think I'll be all right. Just carefully make sure you pull through all of those strands like so, and give yourself a little bit of a um, loopy bit at the bottom. I'm now gonna remove my hook, and I'm gonna put my thumb and my forefinger in the loop, making sure I've still got all the strands and I'm going to widen it a little bit more. So I've got my thumb and my forefinger in here. Like, hey! <laughs> and then I'm just going to bring the ends up and I'm going to pinch them with my forefinger and my thumb and I'm going to pull them through that loop and tighten it. Like so. Now I'm also, I don't know if it seem like a bit of a pain, but I'm going to go through some individual strands and just give it a little bit of a tighten while also pushing my thumb on the knot because if you pull it too hard and this has happened to me all the time it's even happened in one of my tutorials and it went hideously wrong but I kept it in because it was funny <laughs> and 
together it showed you not what to do. If you pull on these too hard, on one of them anyway, it can actually pull the whole tassel out. Well, that strand anyway. But just go for them, give them a, a little bit of a tug, but nothing crazy crazy. And that will just tighten up the knot and keep it nice and secure. And that's my first tassel. So, now you're like, what do I do now? So basically, if we look at our rows, three out of four rows are actually chain space rows. And then one of the rows is a double crochet row, which just so happens that mine has fallen on the double crochet row. And I'm quite pleased that it has because I can show you what to do. Because what I normally do, I mean, you can add as many or as little tassels as you like. But what I have done on my other ones is I have gone to the first chain space and just put my first tassel through each of the first chain spaces on each side. And then I've skipped two chain spaces and then gone in the third chain space along and then put a tassel through there. So you, what I do when I'm on a chain space row, I have two chain spaces in between each tassel. So I have got the double crochet row. You're probably thinking, oh, well, how are we going to do that? So what I do is, okay, so what I do is I use my first chain space row here, my first chain space, sorry, on the row below as my first guide. And I am going to literally get my hook ready and I'm going to go in between the double crochets. I'm not going to go in the top of the stitch. I am literally finding that first chain space before the corner, using that as my guide. And I'm just going to go right there. Doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to go in between two of the double crochets, which are kind of in line with that chain space. And then what I'm going to do before I put my uh, next tassel in, I'm just going to count how many stitches there are. So I've got my corner chain space here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from here on out, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then in between the seventh and eighth double crochet, that's where my next one's going to go. And I'm going to keep repeating that all the way throughout. So that's how I do it on this row. So I'm going to show you again. Right, what colour have we got next? Ly Lilac-y kind of colour, which is not quite in the shot. But I'm going to grab five of my lilac colour and show you one more time how to do the tassels. Just keep them kind of even, like so. Just run my fingers through them. Find the centre of the yarns and create that loop. Now my hook is already in here because I've had to count my stitches. Well, I didn't have to do it really this time, but I will be putting my hook in first so I can count all my stitches. I'm going to hook the yarn over my hook. <laughs> Put the yarn over my hook might have been a better thing to say. And then pull all of those strands through, making sure I get all of them. Oh, actually, look at that. Look, I didn't quite get them all. Ah, I see. Now it's gone a bit funny. Maybe I should grab a hook size. We just do that again. Right, let's try that again. Sometimes it helps to pull it nice and tight on, on this yarn here so you can get them all through. Just give them a little wiggle if you have to. There we go, I got them. And just create a loop. Oh gosh, see this. <laughs> okay, it's going okay, everything's fine. Nothing is gonna go wrong. Uh, yes. So make sure you get your finger, your thumb and your forefinger through every single loop. Make sure none of them are twisted or anything because that's probably the next thing that I'm going to do wrong. Right, and I'm just going to flip this over and pinch it and pull it through. Like so. And then go through each individual strand, carefully pulling it to make sure that the knot 
is secure. I mean, I know this bit's annoying, but if you don't do it, then you run the risk of your tassel coming out. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Going through each one. There we go. Now I'm happy with that. And then what I do is I have done this bit on this side. I then go to my opposite side and then put that tassel there. And then I come to my other side and then put that tassel there. And then I do the same on there. So I'm working both at the same time. That's a real handy tip. If you decide that you don't want tassels all the way around your cowl. Now you can stop whenever you like. Like you could try it on and stop when it gets to a certain point. You could lay it out flat and think well I just kind of want like this little bit up to here that's fine I personally like to put it all the way around and I usually put if it if it works out okay like my last one in the center because obviously the front of the cowl is much bigger than the back of the cowl like this area is quite small so I like to have the tassels in the back too but it's completely personal preference so yeah, keep adding your tassels until you're happy. Um, and then well, I'll meet you back here when we're done. And then you're pretty much nearly finished. You could just give them a little trim up if you like, but we'll talk about that when we get there. <laughs> okay, I have added tassels all the way around my cowl. Now it's up to you, but if you want to, you can give them a little trim up. That's what I tend to do, to be honest. I don't do anything special with my trimming. Also, if you want your tassels to be poker straight and you own a set of hair straighteners, then you can put them on the lowest setting and just carefully glide them down each tassel and that will give you a straighter finish. But I quite like mine looking a bit wild and crazy, so I'm just going to leave mine as it is. But I will just give them a little trim. If I just show you how I do a little trim. So I have got one in the centre. So what I'm going to do is just kind of half it where it falls. Just kind of half it like so. So it kind of goes on a diagonal, doesn't it? I'm just going to grab a couple, I think. And just literally... Give it a little diagonal trim. You're probably like, oh my God, she's doing that right crazy. Well, yeah, I am doing it a little bit crazy, but I'm not really too bothered. Like I say, I like it to look a bit wild and woolly or whatever. Not wild and woolly, but you know what I mean. I'm not too fast, do you know what I mean? I'm not really that fast. So I'm just taking my ones that I've just cut and then my next ones, and just kind of roughly lining it up with a bit of a diagonal trim again. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around. And then do the same thing on the opposite side. And that's it. It's done. So you will see me here again in a little while with it on and uh, being modelled just want to say while I'm here thank you so much for joining me for another tutorial I hope you had lots of fun hope I didn't waffle on too much <laughs> um, and I'll see you again here very soon for another one okay so here it is my finished bandana cowl I'm just going to pop it on and show you how I wear it so get all my fringe out like so if you find that you've put it on and this top bit's quite big and out here like this I just tend to like just give it a little nothing too crazy because you could be standing here for ages trying to work out how it looks amazing how to make it look amazing after a while that area will relax especially after you've washed it it gets softer and it will relax into a more natural shape so I've made my uh, ribbing so that when I'm out and about and it's really cold, I can like have it up high. If I want to wear it as an accessory, I'm just going to fold it down. And just again, just pat that area a little bit. Like that. See how close I can get to the camera before I disappear. 
And there we go. There we have it. Bye.